Today, I'm super excited to share my new go-to infrastructure automation tool. It's simple, it's clean, it's modern, and it's very capable. It's Ansible Semaphore UI, or just Semaphore UI these days. And I'll get into more of that in just a minute. If you love the power of Ansible, but want a lightweight, user-friendly platform, plus the ability to support things like Terraform, PowerShell, custom scripts, and even more, Stick around and let's dive in. Semaphore UI is an automation tool that provides a clean, modern look, and it's incredibly easy to get started. In fact, as I will show you, you can actually spin it up in under about five minutes using Docker Compose. No complex installs or files to have to copy around, no heavy dependencies. For home lab enthusiasts or small teams who want more than just an Ansible tool, but something less than a behemoth like GitLab, this is a definite sweet spot. When I took a look at Ansible Semaphore back in 2023, it was at that point Ansible only, and it provided an amazing interface for Ansible if you were looking for a GUI. If you've ever played around with Ansible AWX, that was Ansible's official GUI to the Ansible command line. And it was a bear to get stood up and working. It just seemed like a lot of complexity just to simply have a GUI for your Ansible playbooks. However, now Semaphore UI has evolved beyond Ansible, and it is definitely a better GUI than the Ansible AWX solution and much simpler to provision. But again, you can do much more with it. You can do things such as manage your Terraform and open Tofu for provisioning your infrastructure's code. You can use it for TerraGrunt, for the dry workflows. You can use it for PowerShell, for Windows automation. You can use it for even custom scripts, such as your Bash scripts, Python, Pulumi, you name it. And so lots of capabilities there. When I first tried Semaphore a couple of years ago, it was purely just that Ansible GUI, but today it's actually a multi-runner platform. You can basically do just about anything you want to with it, and it's less complex, less heavy lifting to get it stood up than something like a true CI-CD. In fact, Semaphore UI parses your Terraform plan. It shows it to you in a scrollable view, and it lets you approve or even roll back with a click. No more flipping back and forth between the CLI. You can also import your TerraGrunt modules to standardize configs across dev, staging, and prod. One template, multiple environments, one tool. Also, the WinRM integration means that you can run your PowerShell scripts to manage things like IIS, patch Windows servers, or even collect logs. And we all know this with PowerShell, sky's the limit. And if you have a one-off Python or shell script that you need to run in a very effective and predictable way, just create a generic template in the Semaphore UI and it handles everything for you, such as scheduling, execution, and even collecting the logs from the run. Also, it provides a powerful scheduler. You can have your scripts, your Ansible playbooks, or even Terraform plans and applies run at a specific given interval that you want to check and see possibly if there's any drift or you want to actually make changes in a gauged and very predictable way on that schedule. So think CICD pipelines here with scheduling without all of the complexity, once again, of a full-blown pipeline. Now with the Semaphore UI, you can see which host succeeded or failed at a glance. You can share task templates across your team and it also has in the paid version even more capabilities and more on that in just a moment. And scheduling regular runs for drift detection really helps, I think, to make this a really fully featured tool that is a great middle ground. Again, more than just one-off scripts, but less than full-blown CI-CD pipelines. So let's walk through how to get Semaphore UI installed and up and running in your environment with Docker Compose code. So what I have here is the Docker Compose code for getting Ansible Semaphore UI set up. And not a whole lot special here. I'm just simply using the Postgres configuration. So you can use Postgres or MySQL with Semaphore UI. So we've got a Postgres database container defined 
the standard 5432 ingress for the container, the image for the container, we've got our bind mount set up so that we have it targeting CephFS for persistent volume storage. We've got our Postgres user, Postgres password, and of course the database. And here is just a added bit for Docker Swarm. And this is a Docker Compose file that I'd used in testing on Docker Swarm as well. And so this deploy statement would not be found in a regular Docker standalone host. So now we get down to the semaphore container. And here is where most of the configuration happens specific to semaphore. These parameters that you see for extra host, DNS, DNS search are probably things you don't need to add in your environment. I was playing around with various networks a little bit earlier, so I had this particular configuration in there. However, you can probably do away with that and just stick with your uh, regular configuration. We got ports. Of course, this is ingress 3000 to port 3000. You can change this to anything that you have free, uh, whatever that needs to be in your environment. However, default is 3000. And then, of course, we got our image. We are mounting it on a Ceph FS volume bind mount. Uh, so you would replace this with whatever makes sense in your environment for persistent storage. And then under the environment configuration stanza, here is where all of the configuration really happens specific to Semaphore. And of course, our DB user and pass and host, that is all going to match what we see here. So we're targeting our Postgres container the user, the password, and as you can see, those match here. So you're going to, of course, replicate what you configured this user to be here. And you can also use an environment file, a .env file, to house some of these sensitive variables. However, just to be more straightforward, that's how I'm showing that to you here. And then, of course, admin password, as well as admin email for use in email alerts. And we got our admin, we got the host, and the SMTP port, the from address, and alert recipients. So all of this really makes sense here. Again, the deploy and constraints, you will probably not need that unless you're running Swarm also. And I'll have this posted in the blog post that I had written up on Semaphore UI, so you can reference that. Now let's break down a few more of the features and capabilities of Semaphore UI. Semaphore offers role-based access control and audit trails, so for compliance, it has you covered. Also, you can do notifications to things like email, Slack, or Telegram on success and failure. Just a key point here, email is failure only, but the others notifications, Slack and Telegram, you can do success and failure. It also has built in secrets source, so you don't have to plug or hard code secrets into your code. And it also has a REST API, so you can access it programmatically. The paid pro and enterprise tiers uh, offer additional scaling and of course, official support. So let me walk you through just a few of the test playbooks and things that I've been playing around with in the home lab just to give you an idea of what you can do with this amazing tool. So just a quick rundown of the interface of Semaphore UI, and we wanted to show you guys just a quick overview of that. The dashboard shows you all of your task templates that have either ran or completed successfully or have failed. So this is a nice overview to just get a feel for your scripts and other automated tasks that you have running from Semaphore UI. You've got stats, you've got activity, our settings for the particular project that we uh, are working with. You can also back up the project. You can delete the project, clear cache. Here's where you can set global alerts. You can set a telegram chat ID, uh, lots of different things here. Now runners are a concept that are available in the pro version. So definitely check that out if you need to scale out further from just a simple centralized uh, installation of Semaphore UI. On the task templates, this is where we actually define our jobs. You've got the ability to create new templates here. You can see everything from Ansible, Terraform, Open to Tofu, Bash Scripts, PowerShell Python, and even custom applications if you want to add those here. So a lot of really nice features there that you can even extend the functionality of Semaphore. Of course, the scheduling functionality 
I think is really what makes this powerful. Uh, like a CI/CD, you can actually schedule when these task templates run, and it's got a very intuitive interface for the scheduling. You can just name your schedule. You can pick the template that you want to run, the task template, and then literally just select when you want it to run from yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. And you can use cron format or just a simple GUI interface to set up your schedules. Inventory is where you actually configure the target that if you want to look at it that way, the target of the task templates that you're going to configure uh, your Ansible inventories. Uh, here I've just got a simple static file for a playbook and just a single server in there. So that's where that gets defined. And in your task template, when you edit that or when you're creating it, you actually point it to a specific inventory that you have created. Key stores, this is where you set up your credentials as well as things like your SSH private keys. And you can find multiples of those. Just simply type in a name, you select the type, it can be SSH key or just simple basic authentication, login and password or none for anonymous if you have something uh, set up that way. On the repository screen, this is where we set up our connection to our Git server. And this is where it connects to, clones down the code that contains the files that get run in the task template, and then it runs the task template file from there. So I love that this is driven from Git. Integrations is really uh, mm -hmm. interesting as well. You can set up uh, integrations with Semaphore, but it also creates the ability for a REST API back to Semaphore. So you can automate the running of task templates. So let's say you have a CICD that finishes running, you want to trigger a task template. Well, this endpoint is where you can actually set that up to do that. So that's pretty slick, pretty cool thing there. And then also Teams abilities and more of that in the pro and enterprise version. So just a quick overview of the interface. I think there's a lot to unpack there. So uh, definitely check out the official documentation from Semaphore UI if you have questions on more of the functionality. But all in all, I'm no Semaphore UI expert, but it's intuitive enough that anyone can spin up a Semaphore UI container. And honestly, within 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to feel at home with the interface. It's that straightforward, that simple. And when you're talking about automation, something that's not necessarily easy in itself, the last thing you want is to have to learn a tool that takes hours to learn just to get your automation off the ground. And the beautiful thing, again, Semaphore UI, I think removes that blocker for most in the home lab or production environments. So there you have it. That is Semaphore UI. It is lightweight, it's versatile, and it's certainly grown far beyond simple Ansible playbooks. And I have to tell you, it has certainly quickly become my go-to for quick and very effective automation. So if you're looking at automation, the home lab for your next project, look definitely at Semaphore UI. I think you're going to love it. And definitely in the comments below, let me know if you're already using Semaphore UI or if you have recently downloaded it and are starting to spin up some automation. I'd love to hear your ideas, thoughts, and opinions. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more virtualization and automation tutorials and just really cool stuff that we cover here. And ring that bell icon so that you don't miss a future video. You can also connect with me on my official blog, virtualizationhowto.com. You can follow me on the Twitters as well as the amazing Home Lab Explorers School community. It's totally free to join and lots of great community members there to help out and help you through the community challenges that we're all working through together. So be sure to check that out and do join. Thanks for watching. Do stay safe out there. Keep on home labbing and I will see you in the next video.